Hello, I am Mario Waif, and welcome to Super Mario Bros. in Review. The show where I will be reviewing all 18 Super Mario Bros. platformers and ranking them to find the ultimate Super Mario game. To make this list of 18, I had to make some exclusions. The arcade games Donkey Kong and Mario Bros., while both great arcade games, are not being included. I think most can agree that Mario as a platforming series started with Super Mario Bros., and the arcade games being included would just muddy the waters. I am also excluding Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island. While being a numbered sequel to Mario World, I consider it a Yoshi game. In a similar vein, Wario Land Super Mario Land 3 would also be considered a Wario game. This leaves the final list as Super Mario Bros. 1, 2 The Lost Levels, 2 USA, 3 World, Land, Land 2, 64, Sunshine, Galaxy 1 and 2, 3D Land, 3D World, Odyssey, and the new Super Mario Bros. 1, 2, Wii, and U. Over the course of this series, I will be visiting each in chronological order and sorting them in either a 2D Mario list or a 3D Mario list. Then once all 18 have been completed, we will merge the two lists to see which game is truly, mathematically, the best. And of course, first we will be starting with Super Mario Bros, the OG, the one that cemented Nintendo into stardom. Originally published on the Famicom in September of 1985, SMB launched sometime later that year on the Nintendo Entertainment System, and the rest is history. Super Mario Bros was the brainchild of the one, the only, Shigeru Miyamoto, dad of Mario and Luigi. The soundtrack was done by Koji Kondo, the best composer in the business, and along with only four other developers, they managed to release one of the most pivotal games ever. After the debacle that was E.T. for the Atari 2600, most of the American public had lost faith in console video games, in what is now dubbed the Video Game Crash of 83. Consoles were clearly not cutting it, long live the arcade. Nintendo, on the other hand, wanted a slice of that cake. What was then a long-running toy company, Nintendo branched into the video game market. After putting out a few different arcade games, Donkey Kong really put Nintendo on the map. Then with games like the Donkey Kong sequels and Mario Bros bringing even further success, it was time to hit the home market once again. Nintendo launched the Famicom Home Computer in Japan in 1983, along with some arcade ports to middling success. Yet the launch of the NES in the States would be harder still, due to the aforementioned E.T. debacle. To curb the view on video games, Nintendo marketed the NES more as a toy, using Rob to really sell that premise. And to really seal the deal, Nintendo promised that games on the NES would be held to a much higher standard than those on the Atari, as marked by the Nintendo seal of approval. But the Nintendo Entertainment System's success was all but solidified with the release of Super Mario Bros. Now here's where I have to admit a couple of things. Super Mario Bros. is not my favorite Mario game. Not by a long shot. And I am very, very bad at it. I first played it on the Wii Virtual Console, rest in peace Sweet Prince, and have really only played it a handful of times since. Of course I've beaten it, a couple times on Wii and a couple more on the Switch, but my nostalgia for this series comes from, really, any other entry. But I strive to look past my personal prejudices, look past my poor skill level, and review this game as it is. So what is Super Mario Bros? Mario, or originally Jumpman, started out as just a lowly carpenter in the Donkey Kong arcade game. Gaining a new name and a brother, Mario and Luigi switched to the plumbing business in the Mario Bros. arcade game. Sometime during the events of Mario Bros., the duo found themselves warped to the Mushroom Kingdom, land of Princess Toadstool and the Toad Folk, as well as, and I'm quoting here, the Koopa, a tribe of turtles famous for their black magic. See, the evil King Koopa, or as we now know him, King Bowser, has turned the poor denizens of the Mushroom Kingdom into brown bricks and captured seven of them within his castles. The only person who can revive the Toads is Princess Toadstool, who has, gasp, been captured. Now Mario and sometimes Luigi must travel the land to rescue her. Yeah, the original instruction booklet had some weird writing, but the main point is simple. Princess captured, Plumber goes to save her, Plumber beats the Koopa, and saves the day. I'll be saying this a lot throughout this in review. The Super Mario series is not and has never truly been about the story, though. Where it shines is in gameplay, and gameplay is what cemented Super Mario Bros. as an all-time classic. 
it just hasn't aged the best. In Super Mario Bros, the titular bros are the player characters. Player 1 plays as Mario, 2 is Luigi. Mario can run left or right, jump to stomp on baddies or get atop platformers, and smash blocks with his hand or head, maybe. If a block doesn't explode, it'll either contain coins or an item. Getting 100 coins next to an extra guy. Getting a mushroom makes Mario Super Mario and he gets taller. The Fire Flower allows Mario to shoot a couple of fireballs, the Starman makes Mario invincible for a short time, and the 1-Up Mushroom also gives an extra guy. A new man. But getting hit makes Mario shrink back, and getting hit while small kills the guy, losing one of the hard-earned extra men. Mario runs or swims to the right to progress the level, hopping on blocks and big shrooms to either stomp or avoid the various enemies. As he runs to the right, the screen does get locked, so anything missed gets blocked off. And after reaching the end, there is a flagpole that Mario touches to finish the level and move on to the next. Throughout each level are a few secrets to be found. There are hidden and invisible blocks that usually reward a one-man. In lieu of coins or items, sometimes a block will sprout vines that lead to a hidden coin area, and occasionally pressing down on a pipe can transport Mario to an underground area. These usually contain coins, but can sometimes be a short underwater level, too. The exit then spits Mario out closer to the flagpole. Most notoriously, of course, are the warp zones. On certain underground levels, if Mario jumps up and around the pipe that brings him to the end of the level, he's brought into a special warp zone that'll allow him to skip to a future stage. The baddies mainly consist of Goombas, Koopas, and Piranha Plants, with later levels introducing Spinies, Buzzy Beetles, and Hammer Bros. Water levels have Cheep Cheeps and Bloopers, and Castle levels have Podoboos, Fire Bars, and a boss encounter with the King Koopa. Actually, the first seven worlds have a fake version of Bowser. If defeated with fireballs, the minion loses their Bowser disguise and falls into the lava below. But without a Fire Flower, all the bosses require Mario to either jump over or run under the king and touch an axe behind him, cutting the bridge and dropping Bowser below. And every time I have to beat him, I usually just cross my fingers, close my eyes, and run because I am terrible at avoiding his attacks, especially when he starts throwing hammers. After beating the first seven bosses, a Toad Cap T lets Mario know the princess is further along still, with a final encounter allowing Mario to rescue her for real. It feels a little silly explaining how Super Mario Bros. plays, since pretty much every platformer after uses some variation of this formula. But I really think it's important to take in this game as it was at its release. Before Super Mario Bros., the idea of a scrolling level was unheard of. How Mario controlled was groundbreaking. And every single level is a masterclass in level design. A lot has been written about how level 1-1 is a perfect intro level. It introduces the player to jumping on enemies, getting items from blocks, hidden blocks, warp pipes, and bottomless pits. Each level after uses all these aspects as well as throwing in new enemy and level types here or there. The difficulty curve is perfect, with every level getting harder and harder until Mario is navigating Hammer Bros with no power-up in a mad rush to get to Big Bad's castle in World 8. It's truly amazing how much they were able to fit into such a small game. The levels are all so innovative, constantly iterating on the very few included mechanics. These iterations don't get old, each level is only a couple minutes long, and by the time some mechanic is brought back, it returns in a completely different context. One of my personal favorite iterations are the castles with varying paths. Mario needs to loop through a short area until the correct route is taken. It's such a clever way to add a slight challenge. And here's the part where I admit that I cheated. I started out playing normal, I was bad, I died like twice on stage 1-1, one, one, but I kept trekking. I got up to world 6 before I game overed. Then I used warp zones to get back and got another game over. But this time, I started using the rewind function to place me at the start of the level again. I understand my own limits, and try as I might, I'm never going to be that great at Super Mario Bros. And the time it would take for me to get at least good enough to beat it in one go, I'd rather spend that time playing games I like a little more. Luckily, I only had to rewind a couple of times, at least until 8.4. I had to use it a lot in 8.4. It's just so long, there's no good markings to know I was going the correct way, and my god, am I bad at this video game. I simply cannot wrap my head around the physics. Something about Mario's momentum is endlessly frustrating to me. 
It takes too long to start moving, there's almost no aerial control, hopping on enemies doesn't give Mario enough of a boost. I won't say any of this is bad per se, but platformers have had a decade to make these mechanics feel so much better, and I can't help but wish for this level of polish while playing SMB. And while I'm airing grievances, not being able to run to the left is a shame, albeit understandable for the time. With all of that being said, Super Mario Bros. for the Famicom and NES is a great game for its time. It is truly groundbreaking. So many games have modeled itself off of it, and all of its strengths made for a great foundation for all Mario games to come. But will its solid foundation be able to stand against years of iteration? For now, I'll be ranking the 2D and 3D games separately, so currently, Super Mario Bros. is number one of the 11 2D platformers. How long will it stay there? We will see. But for now, it's time to play Super Mario Bros. 2, The Lost Levels. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, maybe leave a rating or a sub to be notified of more. While you're down there, you can check the description for all of my socials where I'm at Mario 8th everywhere. I'm on Twitter, Tumblr, and you can see what games I'm playing on ggapp.io. Also in the description is the playlist that every Mario in Review video will eventually be in. And if you'd like, let me know what your personal Mario ranking is in the comment section. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.